Hey there friends, it's Laurie. Today I'm making three spring and Easter decor DIYs. I'm making a spring and Easter bunny along with a happy Easter egg wreath. To help keep the cost down, I did use mostly Dollar Tree supplies. And as always, I hope you have fun crafting with me. So let's get busy. Getting started, I'm using one of the white plush decor bunnies from the Dollar Tree. It has a weighted bottom so it can stand up on its own. I removed the price and manufacturer tags. I'm adding a simple bow around the bunny's neck and I'm using some of this pretty plaid Easter ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I tied it tight enough so that I didn't have to hot glue it to the bunny's neck and then I clipped off both ends at an angle. You can leave the bunny's ears as is. I wanted to give mine a little bit of personality, so I folded both over and hot glued them in place. For the bunny's garden, I'm using two terracotta pots. One of them is a small two inch pot, and I picked this up at Walmart for 88 cents. The second is a two and a half by two and a half inch terracotta pot and I found these at the Dollar Tree. I want to paint the pots in two of the colors that match the bunny's bow. So on my larger pot, I'm painting this one green. For my smaller pot, I'm using a light blue acrylic paint. Now that they're dry, I'm adding a piece of the same Easter plaid ribbon to the top of the green pot. I used my glue gun to first attach it and then worked my way around. Now that I have it attached to the top of the pot, I'm using the same ribbon and making a simple bow. I then glued the bow onto the pot and I made sure to cover up those two matched up ends. To fill in the bottom of my pot, I'm placing in an everyday cotton ball. This will just take up a little space so I won't need as many eggs. You can add in anything you'd like. I'm using four plastic Easter eggs from this Dollar Tree garland. I decided what color order and hot glued them into place. For the smaller blue pot, I'm using three carrots from this Dollar Tree six pack. These tucked in tightly together, so no need for hot glue. I just placed them in the pot. Adding the bunny and the carrots together is super easy. I just hot glued its paws around the pot. The bunny doesn't come with its own tail, so I'm using another everyday cotton ball and attaching it onto the back. For the garden's base, I'm using a 5 by 7 piece of wood from the Dollar Tree. I'm using some white acrylic paint and I'm giving it a coat. Now that the base is dry, I'm going to add on the bunny and her flower pot. I added some hot glue onto the bunny's bottom and then placed her down at an angle on the base. I'm now adding on the pot of Easter eggs and I glued that down at an angle as well. With those in place, I'm adding on two additional plastic Easter eggs as an accent. To 
to finish up and give the bunny's garden a bit of a spring vibe, I'm using some small daisies that I had on hand. I added one to the top of the bunny's head, two onto the green pot, and one on the Easter egg. Now that I'm done, this cute bunny is complete. If this is your first time stopping by, please consider clicking on that little red subscribe button below, leaving me a thumbs up, and to all my returning friends, you know I am always so happy to see you. To make my spring bunny, I'm starting with one of the Dollar Tree Hippity Hoppity signs, and I'm removing the bunny from the top. I'm hanging on to the hippity hoppity because I'm sure I'll be using that in a future DIY. Now that it's detached, I removed the burlap bow and the silver accent on the ear. To clean up the imperfections that are left on the front and the back of the bunny, I used an old piece of sandpaper and gave them a quick sanding. It doesn't have to be perfect because in the end it'll all be covered. To hide all the imperfections, I'm giving the bunny a coat of white acrylic paint on the front and on the back. With both sides of the bunny dry, this next step is completely optional. I'm using a pencil and I'm outlining the outside edges. I'm starting by sketching around the ear and then rubbing the pencil in with my fingers. When I'm done, the bunny will have an outline and a bit of a smoky accent. I'm using one of the Dollar Tree bunny headbands to add on some accents. The headband is covered plastic, so I snap them off on both sides and then cut them free with my scissors. I remove the plastic inserts and cut the ears to size. Then, using my hot glue gun, I attach them onto the bunny. I then added a dot of hot glue inside each ear to close both of the ends. To decorate the bunny's neck and the base, I'm using an assortment of small spring flowers that I already had on hand. After you've been crafting for a while, you end up having little pieces and leftovers from a ton of different projects, so I just jam all mine into these plastic bags, and this is what I'm picking through to find my flowers. In addition to the flowers, I'm also using some small sprigs of greenery. I'm making sure that I have plenty along with the matching flowers to use around the bunny's neck and on the base. I'm starting first using my glue gun and attaching the sprig of greenery. From there, I'm adding on the small flowers and honestly, I don't have a plan. I'm just adding on the hot glue and popping some flowers into place. I'm keeping with the theme of pastel spring colors, but you can always make this with a farmhouse vibe using neutral tones.
For the bunny's tail, I'm cutting off a small piece of the leftover headband. I removed the plastic and I cut it into a circular shape. Using my glue gun, I attached it over the bunny's tail. To make the base for this project, I'm using a 12 inch wooden skewer from the Dollar Tree. I gave it a coat of the same white paint. For the bottom of my bunny's project, I'm using a four and a quarter by two and a quarter wooden decorative box, and you guessed it, this came from the Dollar Tree. I'll be turning it over and the bottom will become the top, so I did make sure to remove the tag. I'm starting by using three of the DT's tumbling tower blocks as my base, and in total I'll end up using five. I added some hot glue to the inside center of the lid and placed down my three tumbling tower blocks side by side. With that complete, I'm drilling a hole in the top center of the box, just large enough to accommodate the dowel. I used the same white acrylic paint and I gave the outside of each a coat. With the box dry, I'm adding on a simple accent. It's a purple sheer ribbon, and I picked this up at the Dollar Tree. I added some hot glue about a half inch or so from the top, placed down the ribbon, and wrapped it around the box. Once I have all of my pieces added together, I'll be adding on a small bow. Before I can add the bunny to the base, I need to attach the white dowel onto the back. I added E6000 to the center of the bunny and placed the dowel down on its back. I let it set up for a couple of hours and now I'm ready to attach all the pieces together. This is where I'm using those two extra blocks. I added some hot glue on the original three and attached them, leaving a hole in the center. I added hot glue completely around the inside base, then quickly slid the bunny through the opening on the box. I placed the end of the dowel in between the blocks, added a generous amount of hot glue, then attached the box to the base. I made sure the bunny was straight, and then held it in place for a couple of minutes until the hot glue cooled. I'm using my second set of the greenery and flowers to decorate the top of the base. Just like the bunny, I added the greenery first and hot glued the flowers around it. I didn't have a specific placement for them. I added on some hot glue and stacked them around the dowel. To finish up, I'm using the same sheer purple ribbon and I'm making a simple bow. I cut the two ends off at an angle and then attached it to the front of the base, making sure to hide where I attach the two ends of the ribbon together. I really liked making this bunny DIY because it's not only perfect for Easter, but I can leave it up through spring and summer too. To make my happy Easter egg wreath, I'm starting with the 14 inch wire wreath form from the Dollar Tree. I need something to glue to, so I'm wrapping mine with the Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. To make it easier to work with, I cut it into strips, but then when I looked down, I realized I was not alone. 
We've had a few warm days here in the Northeast, and I think this little ladybug flew in to craft with me. Now that she's safely outside to hang with her friends, I'm using my glue gun and attaching the burlap to the form. I place down my first piece, making sure to fold the end under. From there, I started wrapping the ribbon around, adding some hot glue here and there to help hold it in place. If you're using the burlap ribbon, be sure to use some type of finger protector because the hot glue seeps through it so easy and you can definitely get burned. I'm using the Dollar Tree burlap ribbon, but you can pretty much use any type of ribbon that you have on hand. Most of the wreath will be covered. Be sure to use something that's hot glue friendly. To cover my wreath, I'm using six packages of these pretty decorative Dollar Tree Easter eggs. They each come with a ribbon hanger and I wasn't able to pull them out, so I ended up cutting them off. In addition to the Easter eggs, I'm also using some plastic eggs from this Dollar Tree Easter garland. They come on a string and after I untied it, they just slid right off. I'm attaching my eggs to the wreath today using Gorilla Hot Glue. They're not sponsoring me, but it's a really good product, and once I attach the eggs, I know they're not going to move. Getting started, I'm using the larger eggs first, and I'm attaching it on the lower portion of the form. My second egg, I'm attaching it about an inch from the first on the top of the form. There are only five different colored eggs, so I'm doing my best to alternate the colors, and then just working my way around the form. As I was adding them, I just kind of guesstimated between each egg, but if you want them to have perfect spacing, I would definitely measure them. I now have my first row of the larger eggs in place. I'm now adding on those smaller eggs that came from the garland. I'm gluing one in between each of the larger eggs and there's only so many colors so once again I'm trying to alternate them as I'm attaching them to the wreath. With the small eggs added to the outside, I'm now working on the inside. To fill in all those empty spaces between the eggs, I'm using some natural Spanish moss, and this I already had on hand. I added hot glue onto the burlap and then pushed down the moss. They do sell different colors, styles, and textures of moss. This I already had on hand and it was super messy. I tried my best to not get any hot glue on the eggs, but if you do, no big deal, just push the moss down and around it. With the outside eggs covered, I'm now filling the inside of the wreath with more of my moss.
I cleaned up my work area and removed all that excess moss. And now using my scissors, I'm cleaning up the edges on the wreath. To help hold the moss in place, I'm using some clear hairspray and I'm spraying my wreath, keeping it off of the eggs. It's not a perfect fix, but it definitely helps. I waited for the wreath to dry and now I'm adding on a second layer of the decorative eggs. I'm adding on the hot glue and placing them around the outside empty spaces on the wreath. I'm adding some carrots onto my Easter wreath and I'm using these. It's a six pack from the Dollar Tree. I'm using all six and I'm evenly spacing them as best as possible around the wreath. There'll be one section that's a little more open than the others, but not a problem because I'll be hiding that with a bow. Now that I have them all in place, I'm making sure they don't move by using my hot glue. I'm adding Happy Easter to my wreath and I'm using one of these Dollar Tree signs. I'll hang on to the bunny on the bike for a future project. This time I'm only using the sign. I need something to cover those hanger holes so I'm using some small daisies that I already had on hand. In addition to hiding the hanger holes, I'm also going to be adding them as an accent onto the wreath. I'm adding three daisies one to cover each hanger hole and then one in the center. I'm adding the Happy Easter to the center of my wreath and I always like to find its placement before I permanently attach it. Remember when I was adding the carrots and there was a slight difference in spacing between two of them? That's where I'm adding the corner of my sign. I'm adding a really simple bow to this wreath and I'm using some of the Dollar Tree two and a half inch wired Easter egg ribbon. To make the bow, I'm pinching off about eight inches of the ribbon. I'm making about a four to five inch loop and then twisting my ribbon and making another loop. I pinch the bow together in the center and then add on a piece of floral wire. I wrap it around and twist it tightly in the back. When I'm done, I cut both tails off at an angle. You can add the bow on as is. I'm giving mine a decorative center by using some of the same ribbon and just making a little knot in it. I shortened the ends and hot glued the knot into the center of my bow. I turned the bow over, clipped off the excess wire, and hot glued down the two ends. To add the bow, I added some hot glue to the side of my sign, and then attached the bow down at an angle. I'm adding my final accents onto the wreath and I'm using a few more of those small daisies. With all my daisies in place, this pretty happy Easter egg wreath is ready to hang. Here we are at the end of the video and I really hope you had fun making these spring and Easter DIYs with me. If you're looking for more decor ideas, I will leave some at the end of this video as well as in my description. If you're new to my channel and you've made it to the end of the video, please don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below. I hope you all have a safe and amazing day and I will see you soon. Bye everybody!